Yeah. All righty, next up this morning, with at least half of all American marriages ending in divorce, more than one million children each year are left to cope with the breakup of their families. Yeah, divorce is never easy, of course, but it can be even harder on the children when parents make some very simple mistakes, mistakes that can have lasting consequences. Denise Richards and Charlie Sheen, Kim Basinger and Alec Baldwin, even Britney Spears and Kevin Federline, all famous couples who have battled in infamous divorces. But bearing the burden of the nasty breakups are the children, coping with a home torn in two. And these celeb children are like countless others suffering in this country. When my parents first got divorced, I really was confused. I didn't know what a divorce was. Nick, Alex, and Sabrina had their lives turned upside down when their parents split. Their mom, Christina. For every marriage, you have fights, and you know there's little things here and there. But we always got along, and we had a great life. But after 13 years of marriage, she says she found out her husband was cheating. I had filed for divorce. Um, there was restraining orders and, um, involved. Things turned very ugly very fast, and just spiraled out of control. They didn't really explain that much to me. I just stopped like seeing my dad a lot and I'd have to go to a special place to visit him and it was pretty weird. Everything in my life changed. My grades dropped like significantly and I'd be like getting mad at people more easily and we'd get into more arguments. When I first found out they were getting a divorce, I got kind of mad. I didn't know it was coming at all. The majority of the family's struggles came after the divorce. They would, like, tr trash talk each other, basically. Like, talk bad my whole dad's side of the family and my whole mom's side of the family. And, like, I'd get pissed off because I didn't want to hear it. I Sometimes I don't know who to believe because one of them telling another story and then someone telling another story. I think that they definitely got torn, put into the middle between my ex-husband and myself. Christina says they've made many mistakes, not telling the children what was going on, arguing in front of them, and now they're struggling to co-parent without fighting with each other. I love them very much and I don't want them to keep on fighting over and over again. And it just gets frustrating because you want them to get along. When 13-year-old Alex says he saw his dad fall asleep with a cigarette in his mouth, he was trapped between battling parents. I called my mom and told her about it. And then the, the next morning, he came up to me and threw his cell phone at me and said, why'd you have to snitch? My biggest regret would be of how this divorce hurt my children. I don't feel that children should ever have to suffer because of what two adults decide to do. I think it's, I mean, it's so familiar to uh, many of you out there, many of us out there. With us this morning is Christina Rowe, her oldest daughter, Stephanie. <laughs> And the author of Be a Parent, Not a Pushover, clinical psychologist Dr. Marianne Rosenthal. Wow, how bad did the arguing get between you and your ex? Restraining orders, that bad? Yes, this was a very bitter and nasty divorce, and the arguments were bad. Um, it was a very unexpected divorce. Mm -hmm. I had um, suspected my husband was having an affair, and within a matter of weeks, he um, there was a restraining order issue, and he was out of the house, and things turned ugly very he fast. even did some jail time. Um, he had done some jail time for not paying child support, not mm -hmm. for the restraining so order. So even more reason to argue. Yes. And absolutely. we do want to point out that we don't have the father slash husband here, so we are hearing one side of the story, and we want to keep reminding our audience of that as well. Um, you, so you were married for 13 years, and you said that during that time, you said it was unexpected, but he was, he was a good dad, good husband? Yes, yes. I mean, I thought we were happily married. We had four children, beautiful home. Um, you know, it was a happy life. I didn't, never suspected what was coming, and I was very unprepared for a divorce. It was nothing that I expected that I never thought we were going to get a divorce. But you keep saying that you don't want the children to be hurt by this, and yet they, they are hurt. You can see the, the pain in, in your children's faces, and Stephanie is sitting there at 20 years of age now. Uh, you are hurting them because of the two of you are arguing. Why can't you stop this bitter discussions, bitter fighting? 
You know, that is the biggest concern now because it's been two and a half years since the divorce has been final, and we're still arguing, and I have a very difficult time co-parenting with him, and the children are still caught in the middle, and I wish that we were able to the get along. The people would say, if you really do love them, honestly, you'd stop this and quit putting your hurt above their needs. Well, yeah, you know, I don't think it's a matter that we're just putting our, you know, we're, we are trying to get along, um, and then, you know, he'll push my buttons, we'll be talking, and then the kids will overhear. I don't actually... Yeah. Argue in, we don't argue in front of them, but it's inadvertent the way that they will we'll hear things. Stephanie, what was it like when your parents started to go through the process of splitting up and the divorce in terms of fighting in front of you? You knew it was happening. Absolutely. I mean, you knew that there was there was it, it was especially because I was the oldest you know, so you child. Were. So I was. They told me a lot about it, and there was just so many. When you lies. said they told you a lot about it, what do you mean? They both came to you and told you their side. Absolutely, and it kind of leaves you in, stuck in the middle. Like I didn't know who to believe and. Everyone's telling me different things. What would they tell you? Um, basically, just, you know, there'd be a story, and then there'd be one side of it, and there'd be another side of it. And it leaves, you know, I, I was maybe 16 at the time. It leaves me, I didn't know who to believe. I love both of my parents. Sure. And I was caught in between them, pretty much. You have to make the choice of deciding who's, who's, who's lying. Because you don't know lying. who's telling the truth and who's not. So when you ask your mom, why, why are you breaking up? Why are you getting a divorce? What would she say to you? Uh, you know, she would basically say that it'd be better for our family that, you know, things just weren't working out between did he, them. Did she bring up the infidelity of your father? With me, yes, because I was 16. I was old enough to understand. My younger siblings weren't old enough to understand, you know. Christina, do you think now, looking back, that it was appropriate for you to share some of, I guess, your, your intimate, um, your intimate personal uh, I, I guess experiences with your daughter? No. Now looking back, you know, it was a very emotional time for me. Um, I was, you know, in shock, and she was older, so he was saying some things to her too that wasn't true, and that was something that I did I shouldn't have done. I would, you know, try to explain to her my side of it, saying I believe he's not telling the truth, and you know, want, not wanting to look like a bad parent to yeah. my daughter, I would say, well, this is the truth. And now looking back, I would say I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have just let it go and not have tried to explain, you know, my side of the story and involved her in it. Yeah, uh, doctor, boy, you've yeah. seen a lot of cases like divorce this. hurts kids. Yes. I, I'm, you know, I'm divorced, and I know that we know it hurts kids. And the number one factor that's going to determine how kids are going to react and adjust to a divorce is how conflict is managed and how communication after the divorce. You have divorce needs and recovery needs that need to be met. Mm -hmm. But the problem is kids are de developmentally at different ages. Stephanie probably became almost like the other parent, you know, and a friend and an ally, and that's what happens. Teenagers, on the other hand, they, they don't know what to do. They're trying to individuate and become their own individuals, so they get scared, and they, it's all about peers. They're sure. embarrassed. You know, they become an ally. What? And little kids tend to think it's their fault. So. I think what's, what's really sad about this story is that you haven't spoken to your dad in three years. Steph? Yeah, it's you, been three years now. Why not? Um, basically, you know, I just felt like there were so many lies and there was just so much, you know, so many problems. Like, there, I wasn't getting the truth. I feel it from him I wasn't getting the truth. I feel like I was getting it more from my mom. And, and is it because maybe you were closer to your mom, so you felt I was, more of an allegiance? Actually, no, I was very close to my father. I what was, did he lie to you about? I mean, just, you know, problems that were going on in the divorce, um, you know, saying she did one thing that she didn't do. And I was sitting right there and saw her that she didn't do it, and he was just being a compulsive liar. I felt he was being a compulsive liar, you know. And it just really hurt me. Like, I trusted him, and, you know, he's my father, and he couldn't tell me the truth when I asked him to. It's so hard because I think, you know, you sit there and you go, I mean, the, the, it's, yeah, it's our parents, but they're also human beings. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we all have relationships that don't work out. I mean, you're, you know, is there any way that you'll ever talk to your dad again and, and give him another chance now that you're more of an adult? Um, you know, I never say never, pretty much, but at the moment, no. What if he saw this? What would you want him to know? Um... You know, just I wish the best for him, but I feel like I've grown into I'm an adult now, and it's my decision not to speak to him. And I yeah, he doesn't live that far from you, Stephanie. No, he doesn't. Don't you miss him? You know, I, I miss having a father, but he's not he's not yeah. a father figure to me, so I wouldn't want to give him that. Doctor, what, do you think what Stephanie's doing is just it's it makes it easier to not have the the drama and the fighting? So it, Stephanie's taking care of Stephanie right now, and that's what Which she might needs be a good to thing, do. Yeah. It's a really yeah, okay. good thing. She needs, I mean, I, for a young person...
to have that kind of maturity is really important, yeah. and she will come to it. She sounds, seems like a really grounded young yeah. woman. And, we, and uh, Christine, we're so happy that you're here. We're not here to beat up on you, that's for <laughs> sure, because you've learned so many lessons that you're trying to right. teach all the rest of us. Right. Um, in our studio audience is uh, Marie Edelstein, a teacher from Ch- uh, Children Cope, a court-ordered program for divorcing parents, which I think is a great yeah. idea, because divorcing parents don't know what to do. Murray, thank you for all of your great work. And one of his top, one of his top tips.